Okay guys, so I need to install a fence from that corner of my yard along the canal all the way to that end there. Decided I'm going to use an aluminum fence pretty much exactly like this one here. I installed this fence I guess maybe, oh boy, maybe two, three years ago. There was a, a rotten wood fence here, so I decided to replace it. So I'm going to install this exact model fence along the back. So the first step whenever you install a fence is you got to mark out where your post locations are going to be. And the installation instructions for this fence want the posts to be 72 and a half inches apart, center to center. So I got some wood stakes, I got some mason string, and we're just going to pull a line here all the way down to the other end you can see there used to be a fence here you can see the four by four is cut off in the ground uh, it was a homeowner diy fence it was not very well done um, the spacing wasn't consistent or anything so don't really want to put a fence here but i have to hopefully you guys can see this pink mason's line that i'm going from one end of the yard to the other with it's not in the exact right spot but we'll get it there this is to make sure your fence is straight by having a string, I think I will. Should be about 84, 85 linear feet of fencing. And the uh, reason why I have to install fencing here is I'd like to get another, another puppy dog and the rescue place will not give us another dog until we fence this. So that's the motive. I personally like having the yard open, but don't have a choice in the matter. But the nice thing about that fence, the aluminum fence, you can see right through it. So it's not like a shadow box like that where it really divides the yard up. I do have a gas powered post hole digger, which will be a godsend in this project. Okay, I got this post here that's conveniently located. Oops, lost my knot. Gotta move it anyway, no big deal. Okay, so we got our string line. That guarantees that your fence line is gonna be straight. Don't want a wavy fence. So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where I want my gate. And I'm gonna measure from there to either side. The reason why I'm doing it that way, if you don't do it that way, you may end up with a fractional panel wherever your gate is, and that's unsightly. If you, wanna, if you have to cut a panel down to size, you wanna do that on either end where it's not gonna be as visible. So I'm thinking, because my daughter likes to fish around here, might put the gate somewhere around here. So I think what I'll do is I'll measure from here, again, it's 72 and a half center to center. So let's get our tape measure and get going. On second thought, I'm thinking that's not such a hot spot for a fence because I got rocks there, I got a mango tree there, got an avocado tree there. Maybe I'll put it somewhere where it's there's less in the way. Maybe over here. It's a little inconvenient because now you got to kind of walk that way to fish, but I suppose it's not tragic. I could always put a clearing here for fishing. Let's put it here. So I got these wood stakes at Lowe's. You just kind of line them up with your string line. And smack them in. Although, by code, the fence has to swing out and maybe one a little bit further from that tree there. Let's move it a little bit over. Because this is going to be the post for the gate. Okay, so we got that. Now we're gonna 
measure 72 and a half over and we'll smack another one in. Oh, watch out for the dog poop. Oh, it's not poop. Never mind. So about here. And then you just kind of repeat that process and smack that one in. Okay, I got the first series of stakes smacked in. Probably gonna have to do something about that post right there. I'm not gonna be able to use the post hole digger there. And this measurement here to the fence is less than 72 and a half. So we'll cut a panel down and just stick a post in the corner there. That should be fun digging. I'm so glad I have a gas powered post hole digger. Okay, after lots of digging, got that post out. That was loads of fun. Just kind of manhandle it, use the shovel, spilled my beer. Wonderful. Hate spilling my beer. I'm actually kind of looking at my neighbor's fence right now. He's got a chain link along the back. And he's got it disguised with shrubbery. I wonder if maybe I should do that. Be a heck of a lot cheaper. That aluminum fencing is not cheap. It's gonna cost a, maybe a thousand bucks or so. Well, let's mull it over. Say good morning. Good morning. Okay, so we spent some time and we laid out the fence up to the gate. So we're gonna put a gate right here and they want you to lay out the gate uh, an inch wider than the gate itself. So it's about 47 inches. We have our stakes lined up with our string line. So there's gonna be a partial panel here a full panel here, full panel here, full panel here, full panel here, and then the gate. So we're going to do up to the gate and then continue all the way down the rest of the way. Got the first couple of uh, post holes dug. Uh, the instructions say to use concrete, but I'm going to take my chances with the dirt uh, only because if this fence does have to come down, it's on an easement. I don't want to have to dig out 14 posts or 15 posts from concrete. That's going to suck. Um, regardless, oh cool, an iguana. I'm using this gas powered post hole digger that I got a stellar deal on at Granger. It's a Tanaka. Oh wow. Nature calls. Whoop, I scared him. So the fence merely just clips into these little holes here. This piece here is cut just so I could hide the cut ends on the corner. So what you do after you fasten it together, you just shoot a couple of screws into the post to kind of anchor it into place. So we're going to do that now. On to our second panel. I got my Asian laborer friend here shoveling. My good friend Bobby. Looking pretty good. So I searched three different Lowe's stores. That end post right there is supposed to be a gate post. None of the three Lowe's stores had it. They couldn't order it. Tried ordering online. They said they could only I could only order online if the product was in the store. It seems kind of silly, but whatever. So I ended up just getting an end post, not a gate post. You can see it swaying in the wind here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill the center with concrete, or at least uh, part of the way up, so that uh, it adds, makes the post a little bit more rigid. The gate post does have a thicker cross section. I think it's almost close to an eighth of an inch. This is not. So I'm gonna strengthen it with concrete. And I got a piece of rebar way down in there. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to shovel a couple spoonfuls of, of uh, concrete into that top there. Now I'm just using this fast setting quick read. Now you don't want to fill it up too high until after you get your gate bolted on, otherwise you won't be able to put the screws in this post for the hinges. So I filled it up just below the bottom of where that hinge is going to be on that gate, the bottom hinge. Okay, I got about a bag and a half of concrete in that hole. Threw some concrete in the rebar down that hole. We're going to wait for that to cure and then we'll uh, put the, the gate on. You also wanna finish your concrete so that the water slopes away from the post. You don't want water sitting up, the, sitting up against the post whether you got um, aluminum post like this one or wood. You want the water to slope away. All right guys, rather than bore you with uh, the details of installing, uh, installing all these panels, I just went ahead and did the whole thing. 
Once you do one, it's kind of like doing a thousand, just more work. So I got this gate in. My wonderful daughter helped me do that. This gate's pretty pricey. Code in this county, the gate must swing out or facing out. So it comes with these, uh, all the hardware, the hinges, everything. Biggest part was just finding all this stuff at Lowe's because some stores had stuff, some stuff in stock, others didn't. And then uh, one store would say they had something in stock. When they didn't, it was chaos. So I sunk gate post and concrete. This one too, because the gate is uh, one of those items where you want to make sure it's stable. I still have to fill this post with concrete in this one too. So we can't, the installation was pretty straightforward all the way down to about here. That post right there was dead center where this post was. And notice it's got a big concrete ball at the end. So I had to dig that out. I used um, a shovel to dig on that side right there. And then I simply pried the concrete post that way towards that hole. Uh, it's very heavy, probably weighs 150 pounds. And then I used a ratcheting strap to hoist it out of the hole. That's what she said. Last tricky part was down here. This wood post right here is sunk in concrete. So I couldn't dig down right there. I was hitting a concrete ball. So what I did is I chopped this post to about 53 and a half and I screwed it to this wood fence right here. So it's quite sturdy. Line isn't absolutely perfect, but it's not bad. There's a couple posts that probably need to be trued up a tiny bit, but that's it. So all in all, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 panels and one gate. Is that right? Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah, 14 panels and one gate. Each panel, I think I told you is about 60 bucks. So this is a pretty expensive job. But the nice thing is now, dog can't get out. Nothing can escape this yard. Anyway, hope this helped you. It's a nice fence. They sell it at Lowe's. Just make sure you go check the stock before you buy anything, because it's chaos. And if you found this helpful, please subscribe. And Merry Christmas.